The People's Court new season premiere today at 4.30. work to do before the banquet begins. It's coming closer now. Is it gonna work? It's the only chance I have, maybe the only chance I'll get. What am I doing here anyway? What am I getting into? More important, what am I getting Jody into? What am I doing to her, putting her in danger like this? No, it'll be all right. It has to be. Where is she anyway? I sent that maid 20 minutes ago. Hello. Hi, come in. Thanks. I was afraid you didn't get my message. Oh, no, no, the maid found me. It just takes a while to get from one place to another. Are your accommodations comfortable? Very. I could play tennis in my sitting room. <laughs> I'll bet you could. Uh, what did you want to see me about? I was wondering um, what you're wearing to the party tonight. Oh, well, I, I brought this long gown that I thought would be appropriate. It's uh, sort of a pale green chiffon with a, a drape over uh, one shoulder. I wonder if uh, you'd mind wearing something else. <laughs> well, I, I only brought one long gown. I don't have anything else. Oh, yes, you do. this. Chad, that's... that's beautiful. I, I don't understand. Well, it should fit. I took the dress you were using for the portrait sitting as a model for a dressmaker. It's your size, all right. But this is the... Yes. I thought you'd recognize it. That looks exactly like the dress that's in the portrait. What? <laughs> the dress of Marie Bonaventure. tell you, Mr. Ronaldo, is that it ain't the Bentley Plaza, huh? Yeah, perhaps we did not have time for the decorator. It's important this young lady does not make an attempt to reveal her identity. We cannot have, we must not have any interruption of the proceeding upstairs. Right. Of the pageant, yes. Well, this has the distinct advantage of being very far removed from the festivity upstairs. So you're sure there's no chance of her being discovered? Not in the slightest. Twelve bloodhounds could not find this. No. No one else knows about this room here. You will have no trouble, Joseph. See to this. Yeah. I'll make sure. Edge of Night is brought to you by Bounty, the quicker picker-upper, and by Coast Soap, the refreshing soap that brings you back to life, Coast Deodorant Soap, the eye-opener. I shouldn't exercise. I'm in no shape for physical fitness. Mm -hmm. All you need is a shower. I need more than a shower. You still don't feel better? 
Hold up your hand. I can't lift it. Here, try this soap. It's cold. Is this a deodorant soap? Uh-huh. Gee, cold smells sensational. And it feels sensational. Look at all this lather. You know what? I do feel better. I never thought I'd feel this good again. See? And it'll be even easier for you the next time. No other soap picks you up quite like Coast, the eye opener. Okay, Woodchucks, back on the bus. Oh, no. What do you expect from Woodchucks? Rosie, get something quick. I'll get something quicker. Bounty? Yes, ma'am. Bounty starts quicker. Amazing. So you finish quicker. You mean only bounties that fast? Come on, Counselor. I'll prove it. Let's watch a top challenger try to beat Bounty. See how fast Bounty starts working? Wow. Like I said, Bounty starts quicker. So you finish quicker. And it's strong, too. Bounty, Camp Woodchuck needs you. <laughs> oh, gotta run. Here. For me. And your Woodchucks. Bounty's the quicker picker-upper. Starts quicker, so you finish quicker. And that's when this phony agent just got up and bolted out of the restaurant? Yeah, like a shot. But before that, he comes sauntering over real slowly, and he starts talking to Valerie about this Jefferson Brown case. Now, wait a minute. You didn't know he was a fake then. No, Chief, that was my fault. I hadn't told Jim what we'd discovered. And so at the table, I deliberately spilled my coffee. Yeah, and then on the way to the ladies' room, she makes a telephone call. To the police. That's when he realized there was something fishy and got up and left. Yeah, and I was standing next to the table, and she yells out, Stop him, he's a fake. And so I run over, and I get these swinging doors in my face. That's too bad, that's too bad. I'd sure like to talk to George Foley. Yeah, well, that's my fault. I could have caught him. Well, nobody's blaming you. Jim, it wasn't your fault. I should have told you that I knew he was a fake. And I was going to at lunch, and, I don't know, we got talking about the theater. I still should have caught him. Oh, come on, cut it out. Stop hogging all the blame for yourself. Now, exactly what did he say? All right, now, he said that they had uncovered some new evidence on the Jefferson Brown case. Whoever they are, they found some diary that he kept when he was in Switzerland. A diary, huh? Yeah, and apparently it's rather cryptic. Yeah, this guy had written his diary in some code. And so Foley was asking me if I knew about the diary and if maybe I could decipher some of the entries. Did you? Did you know about this diary before this? No, absolutely not. And why anybody thinks that I could clarify his private notes is beyond me. I wonder if there is a diary. Or if this is just a bluff. Why would he fabricate something like that? I don't know. Maybe just to get his hands on you. What? This is a little disconcerting. What are you talking about, Well, Chief? I don't mean to suggest that I think Valerie's in trouble, but you spent three months with Jefferson Brown in the clinic that summer. If if he has something or knows something of interest to Foley or his friends, I can see why he'd want to get in touch with you. By the same token, he would want to get in touch with Raven. Yeah, I'm sure he would. This is starting to sound a little dangerous. Isn't there some way we could trump up some charges and put this guy away? I've got to find him first. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. What harm can he do to me? I don't know anything about the diary. Just the same. Uh, hey, excuse me. Yes. Yes, sure. Hello, Mike. Derek, do you have a few minutes to see me sometime this afternoon? Sure, just tell me when. What's up? I'm bringing you over a man named Cameron from the Counter Espionage Agency. All right, Spencer, let me see if I've got this uh, straight here. You and Raven, each possessing a key, went to the bank to uh, investigate mysterious Jeff Brown's safety deposit box. Yes. Yeah. Let me see if I've got the rest of it right. Uh, I imagine when you got there, a bank guard stood back a respectful distance. You each put your respective key in the proper hole, and uh, you practically salivating with the idea you, of what you were going to see next. You withdrew the safety deposit box, and you found a... Uh, a diary? A diary. Not gems, not gold, not stocks, not securities, but a dog-eared, beat-up old diary belonging to Jeff Brown. That's all there was, guy. Well, I hope it made for interesting reading, at least. No, not even that. There are only a few entries, all of them in some sort of meaningless code. What period did this diary cover? It was the spring of 1980. That's when I was in Samaritz. That's when I met Jeff for the first time. It's 
Sky, you told me that Brown had delusions of international espionage and so forth. Boy, I'll say to listen to him, he was the master spy. Well, maybe he took that diary all the way to the end of the delusion. Maybe those entries were absolutely meaningless. Mm. No, I don't think so. I think that they had some meaning, some meaning to him. Well, they didn't mean anything to me, and I'm sure you would have found them just as cryptic. I think the diary's worthless. No, I don't think so. I just don't like the idea of Raven having a look at them. You sure that there was nothing in them about me? Well, from what I could tell, the diary predated the plane crash. There wasn't anything in it about you, no. Well, it must have had some importance to him if he went to that trouble to hide it. Well, maybe he hid something else in the box besides the diary. Yeah, that's possible, I guess, but uh, I don't think so. You know, just out of curiosity, I'd like to see that diary myself. No, oh, you'd be wasting your time, believe me. Yeah, maybe, just the same, I don't like the idea of Raven having it. Well, I did tell her that she could only have half of whatever we found in that box. I suppose I could call her and ask her to rip the diary in half. No, no, I don't think that's a good idea. I'll tell you what, Spencer, uh, I'll speak to her about it myself. Nothing. Nothing at all. George Foley, sir. Ah, uh, well, she's reasonably well. Well, I, I mean by that... Wait, well, yeah. I mean, uh, Miss Alexander is uh, quite comfortable as a person. No, 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 sir. We had no, no trouble, no difficulties at all in getting her there. Uh, th there is uh, one little thing, sir. Miss Alexander is being very, very stubborn. Uh, she claims she knows absolutely nothing at all about the diary and, and knows nothing at all about uh, her husband's uh, previous activities in Switzerland before he married her. Really, sir, I had no idea that Miss Alexander was going to be so resistant. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> no, no, it isn't that. I, I, I'm not ready to give up. Yeah, but, uh, well, uh, you see, at, at this point, sir, I, I feel that maybe stronger persuasion would be necessary, and I'm calling you for authorization. Since 1975, lettuce is up 61%. Hey, that's a lot of cabbage. Mushrooms, 46%. Grapes, 82%. It's fruitless. In today's economy, you need Ziploc storage bags. With their unique seal, Ziploc bags are a zip to lock, and they stay locked, so foods stay fresher longer. Mm, what's up, Doc? Carrots, 138%. Oh, no. Ziploc storage bags. There's no better way to protect your investment. Raspberry. Now in your neighborhood. Red apple. New granola and fruit bars. Luscious date. It's the only 100% natural soft granola snack with real fruit in every bite. No additives or preservatives. The Nature Valley way. Soft and chewy. New granola and fruit bars in apple, date, or raspberry. Try the new soft full of fruit granola snack from Nature Valley. Hello, Derek. Mike. Come on in, please. Mr. Cameron, Chief Mallory. Chief David Cameron. It's a pleasure, sir. Thank you, Chief Mallory. As I told you before, Mr. Cameron is with the Counter Espionage Agency. Yes, I'm aware of that. Please sit down. Thank you. It's an honor for me to have you here. What brings you to Monticello? Well, I wish it were pleasure, Chief Mallory, but it's not. I am very much interested in the Jefferson Brown case and the mysterious George Foley, who's... Uh, been passing himself off or trying to as an agent of the CEA. I thought that was the reason for your visit when I got my call earlier, yeah. I told Mr. Cameron about the latest development concerning Foley, his attempt last night to get more information out of Valerie Bryson. Now, I hear he ran when Miss Bryson uh, went to inform your office. Yes, he did, an admission of guilt as far as I'm concerned. If there were any question about his masquerade, the incident at Sid's Tavern dispelled it. He wouldn't have been so afraid if his credentials were genuine. No, no, he wouldn't have been. But that still leaves us with a couple of big question marks, like who is George Foley? And why is he so interested in Jefferson Brown? And why is he hassling Valerie Bryson? No, it's, it's 
It's a question that has me intrigued, Chief Mallory. That's why I came down here to uh, Monticello to check it out personally. Well, you can be sure I'll give you all the assistance I can. Consider all my facilities and the department at your disposal. Thank you. I'm grateful for your cooperation and any help you can offer. Well, just impersonating a government official is a criminal offense in itself, so you can be sure that I will do everything I can to apprehend this man for you. Mr. Cameron tells me that Foley's apprehension may be a lot more important than we realize. Oh? How so? Would you uh, care to take it from there, Mr. Cameron? Well, the fact is I was the chief security officer involved in the Fowler-Wilcox case. I believe you're aware of it. Oh, yes, I'm aware of that. That's... <laughs> Come across my desk a few times over the past year and a half or so. Now, uh, you're referring to Wilcox's son, Damian Tyler, a detective here in your department. Yeah, I sure am. Uh -huh. Well, in any case, after Wilcox's suicide, I was the one who cleared Jefferson Brown of any suspicion regarding the missing documents. Now I find that a George Foley has surfaced here impersonating an intelligence agent and raking over the same ground. Well. Frankly, that's given me cause for some concern. Uh, there may have been more to the case than we knew. Hmm. Chief, uh, thank you for your time. Hello? I have to go. I would like you to uh, keep in touch. Here's my card, if I may. And yes, uh, if you. something else comes along before I call you, let me know. Be in touch. Thank you. And Mr. Carr, thank you so much. My pleasure, Mr. Cameron. Good day, gentlemen. Good day. Good day. A little strange, isn't it? What do you mean? To be so concerned over somebody impersonating a government official? Sure, it's a crime, but still. Whatever it is, I wouldn't underestimate its significance. Cameron may be a low-profile type, but don't forget, he's in second in command of this country's counter-espionage organization. Pampers presents Babes in Toyland. 16 Mattel toys to make your baby happy. Up to $50 in savings to make you happy. Buy these Mattel favorites. See and say, tough stuff, first wheels and more. Get up to $50 in rebates. Just buy Pampers and save Teddy Bear points. Look for the Pampers display in your local store or the ad in Sunday's paper. Let Pampers put your babe in Toyland and save up to $50. We're in San Francisco's world-famous Blue Fox restaurant to secretly replace the fine coffee they ordinarily serve with Folgers Instant Coffee Crystals. Are Folgers dark, sparkling crystals rich enough to top off a world-famous dinner? Let's see. It, it tasted really rich. Hey, you let us know so we can go out and buy it. It's Folgers Crystals. I can't believe it, but it's an instant coffee. It's very rich. Folgers Crystals. Coffee rich enough to be served in America's finest restaurants. I love beautiful hair. Beautiful. Making it beautiful is the art of my profession. Is that right? Uh-huh. Yet there are women who perm beautifully at home with lilt. You see, the key is in the roll-up. A bad roll-up shows frizzes. A good roll-up, beautiful curls. Only lilt has these amazing sponges. They grip better, roll up better for more beautiful hair. Lilt sponges help you roll up so professionally. It even makes me a little jealous. Lilt's professional touch, beautiful. I'm worried about you, lady. Well, don't be. I'm gonna be all right. I can't help it. Do you think I'd be so worried about you if I didn't care about you so much? I know that. And you have to realize that you're the most important person in the world to me, too. It's just that I feel so damned frustrated and helpless not knowing what's gonna happen at that festival tomorrow. All right, well, maybe we can't be certain of that. But there's one thing I do know. If you have obligations, they have to be met. Or else you, you stop feeling good about yourself. Despite the consequences? Despite everything. And if you do something just because the person you love wants you to do it, well, then you can damage that love. Am I making sense? 
Unfortunately, yes. You're right. If I put my foot down and forced you to stay away from the festival, if I forced you to make a choice between me and the thing you've decided to do, that I know you'd always resent me. No. No, I wouldn't. Sure you would. You wouldn't try to. But you wind up resenting me all the same. And it's very hard to love someone that you resent. Does that mean I have your blessing to leave? No. It means that you have my love. No matter what you do. Evening, it will be the eh? Oh, my boy. How splendid you look, eh? A true and proper prince of the realm. <laughs> I wish I shared your enthusiasm, Mr. Ronaldo. Eh? About the way I look, I mean. Oh, come along now. We must realize and put on a certain kind of appearance. It is part of the show, eh? Well, I see. You are painfully aware of the burden of being a prince. But no matter. You are to enjoy yourself this evening. You will do that, no? Yes, I will. Good. Now, Chad, my boy, I would like to speak to you about something before the party begins. Yes. Something important. <laughs> I'm sure you are ignorant of it, but it concerns this young lady you brought here to the castle this morning. Oh, really? What about her? Well, I cannot deny, if I may say so, I know more about Miss Jody Travers than you do. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Ronaldo. I'm afraid I don't know what you're getting at. Well, it is about a delicate situation. After all, uh, she is uh, your guest here. But uh, the truth is, my boy, that uh, the first time you meet her is not by chance. It was arranged by our good friend, the Endicott, to determine if a certain rumor about this young lady was true. Rumor? Yes. Uh, what do you mean? I see you are not aware of this. Break up. Chad, my boy. It seems that this young lady, the daughter of a woman named Leonie Travis, a direct descendant of Marie Bonaventure. It follows, then, that this Jody Travis is also a... No, daughter. that's ridiculous. I mean, no one has ever proved that uh, Marie Bonaventure had a descendant. I am telling you the facts, my boy. We can prove this lineage. This is why the terrorists, they, that they abduct this young girl and indoctrinate her to help overthrow your father's government. How painful is this for you to hear? She has been using you. We feel she is only here to cause some kind of disruption. I am sorry, Chad, but I feel I should be here to warn you about this. Wait a minute. You're not talking about the prophecy of the martyr. Surely a man of your intelligence and sophistication doesn't believe in that prophecy. It's sheer uh, fantasy. I only know, my boy, that history can and does sometimes repeat itself. I only ask you to be careful this evening. Be aware. Trust us to do the right thing. What do you mean, do the right thing? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Now, if you will excuse me, I must go and uh, prepare for the party myself. And my young prince, you must dance with all the pretty girls, eh? <laughs> and uh, the ugly ones, too. <laughs> Announcing Frito's brand, Lights. Remarkably light, crispy corn chip. New Fritos brand lights. Same great taste as Fritos corn chips, but lighter, crispier, incredibly munchable. Fritos lights. The great taste of Fritos corn chips in crispy new Fritos brand lights. I got my A. I got my B's. We've, We've got, got our E's. E's. Got my C and D. I get Myadex because I want more for me. Compare the leading multivitamin mineral formulas. Myadex complete balanced vitamin formula with minerals, including zinc, has the highest potency of them all. I got my manganese, magnesium, my copper, and my zinc. Iron. 
I get Maya Dex because I want more for me. Maya Dex, if you want more. General Hospital, Luke and Holly find a world of excitement and danger at Mystery Mountain. You like roller coasters? Yeah. Oh boy, are you in trouble. General Hospital, weekdays. Yes, Joseph. This is it. Everything is all set. You know what you have to do? Yeah. When shall I make my move? As soon as possible. Tonight, right after uh, the party, when Miss Travis feels uh, she has had a little bit too much of champagne. How do you know she's gonna have enough? Here's my boy. This will assure it. And then it shall come to pass that the descendant of Marie Bonaventure will appear to rally her people again to bid them throw off their shackles, to overwhelm the new tyranny which holds them in thrall. This day shall be known as the day of the second martyrdom, for the arrow of the tyrant will be loosed again to strike down the descendant child, and by her death will be born the new freedom. Mr. Ronaldo? No, sir, Joe. Come in. God, Jody, it's incredible. You are Marie Bonaventure. When it comes to getting one of their favorite lunches... Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs! Kids can be very sophisticated in the art of persuasion. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs! SpaghettiOs. They're round and neat and fun to eat. So, what do you want for lunch today? Oh, SpaghettiOs. Thanks, Ma. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. From Franco-American. Listen, America, to a fresh idea from Cracker Jack. New Cracker Jack Extra Fresh Popping Corn. It's made by the people who have popped more popcorn than anyone else in America. That's new Cracker Jack Extra Fresh Popping Corn. We vacuum pack our special kernels fresh as the 4th of July. They're popping tender, popping big, popping fluffy, popping tasty. It's fresh. From Cracker Jack, America's popcorn people. Tonight, you'll fly with a nine-year-old pilot and watch a 13-month-old water skier make a big splash when That's Incredible returns. Then, two of the NFL's winningest teams go head-to-head -head when the Pittsburgh Steelers face the Dallas Cowboys on the season premiere of NFL Monday Night Football, tonight on ABC. Tonight on ABC's World News Tonight, is your child growing up to be short? Now artificial growth hormones can make short kids tall. But if they're used to turn an average kid into a basketball superstar, is it ethical? ABC News, uniquely qualified to bring you the world. America's master storyteller, Sidney Sheldon, brings you his most provocative heroine yet, and his biggest bestseller of all, Master of the Game, at bookstores now. This is Stormfield, coming up for you on the 5 o'clock edition of Eyewitness News, the latest on the DC-10 crash in Malaga, Spain. The plane bound for New York crashed on takeoff. 46 people are known dead, others still missing. We'll have the latest on that, and we'll have this for you. Some people don't like it, but Woolworths here on 34th Street in the heart of Manhattan is doing a thriving business. No longer the five-and-dime store of old, Woolworths is selling guns. I'm John Johnson, and I'll have that report. Well, that story and much more. If talking long distance is one way your family sticks together, you ought to have Sprint. 
Because along with saving a lot of money, look what you can do with Sprint. For one thing, you can lend your Sprint code to anyone, like this college kid. He's using his father's Sprint code, so when he calls home, he can talk all he wants and still save a lot of money. And Sprint goes where you go. So when you're away, don't get caught like this guy without Sprint. Call 800-521-4949. Sprint, the long-distance specialist. Day of Disaster Risk. Also in the Star. How you can help Ben pain from 20 kinds of headaches. And test your ETIQ with the Star's fun quiz. The Inquirer costs 65 cents. People cost $1.25, but the Star's only 45 cents. Check out the Star.